the confident, the strong, the assertive, the dominant, the leader, the timid, the reserved, the passive, the weak, the follower. When you think of alpha and beta, many of those words and phrases likely come to mind, especially if the references are to alpha and beta males, for example. The alpha male, the man's man, I think we've all heard that one. However, when it comes to the feline world, the phrase alpha cat gets tossed around quite a bit, and to a lesser degree, beta cat or beta feline. On the surface, I think most people understand the references and what is being implied, but what are alpha and beta cats? And are those terms even correct within the feline world? In this material, I'll talk about the alpha and the beta, what defines each classification, and how to know if your pet is more dominant or passive. I've got you covered. Stay tuned. The alpha cat. In truth, there really is no such thing as an alpha cat, as the term itself implies some level of leadership within a pack or a group setting, and because felines, generally speaking, aren't much for that type of community or the development of tight social circles, the alpha title really doesn't apply. In fact, the word itself, that's really just for us. <laughs> when you say alpha, the meaning is implied, even if the word is a bit, eh, just a bit misused. And the same also applies for beta. Anyway, now that we've cleared that up, <laughs> let's move right along. When we talk about uh, alpha cat, the word implies dominance, leadership, confidence, being assertive, taking charge, and perhaps under certain circumstances being aggressive. If you live in a neighborhood, for example, and dozens of cats roam the outdoors on a daily basis, it won't be long before the top dog is known. The alpha cat, the big cheese, the leader. While this doesn't mean that the alpha cat is the leader of a group, or the group, or this group, let's just say that the other cats, they know who runs the show. What does it really mean in the big picture of things? In short, the alpha cat commands respect. Above all, respect. And all the other felines know that, hey, let's not cross the alpha. We can associate with the alpha, but let's not attempt to get the best of the alpha. In real-world practice, the alpha cat is the cool kid in school. The kid that every other kid wants to be like, the kid that commands the utmost respect. When it comes to the feline world, the alpha cat can also serve as the protector. In some cases, shielding other cats from danger. It all depends on the overall dynamic that is in play. As a cat owner, sometimes it can be very difficult to manage the tendencies of an alpha, as dominant cats can be rather hard to tame, hard to train. They want to do things their way, and they're not big fans of taking instruction. This is why it can be very difficult for a dominant adult cat to enter a new home and then respond in a positive way to new people and a new environment. For my personal alpha cat example, I'll speak just a few moments about Burl. If you're a regular around this channel, you know that I've mentioned Burl probably a dozen times over the years. In short, Burl was my senior cat. He passed away back in 2019 at the age of 20. And from day one, at least my day one, Burl was the enforcer, the dominant cat, the respected cat. No one ever dare cross Burl. Because while he wasn't the best in physical health or in physical shape, and he didn't have his front claws, they were removed long before I took over his care, Burl was the man. He was the man, and it's funny, because while most any cat around could have taken him on in a fight and most likely won, they never once tried him. So much about being the alpha isn't about being the biggest or even the strongest. It's an aura, really, an aura, a presence and Burl commanded respect. Years ago, likely long before I knew him, Burl proved himself, and that made him the king of the castle. I currently have three cats, and when they were kittens and Burl was still around, he took on the role of grandpa or the uncle, <laughs> teaching the kittens the ways of the world. Those kittens loved Burl, and he loved them right back. He took care of them. He was the alpha, their alpha. They knew it, and they just loved to be around him, almost like they were anxious for him to share his wisdom. And within that trio of kittens, they're all grown up now. Two males and one female. Well, I've got one alpha male from that trio. We often talk about cats being independent and doing things their own way. Most of the time, that rings true the most when you're talking about an alpha. My way or the highway, it can be a pain at times, dealing with such a personality. So, in summary, what's an alpha cat? 
It's more or less a slang term for a dominant feline, the leader, the most respected, the most assertive. The first one to step up and the last one to step down, that's one way to look at it. Now let's talk about those betas, shall we, here again. In our day-to-day -day world, let's go back to the alpha and beta males. Generally speaking, right or wrong, people often view beta or being beta as weakness or being weak. And while that is certainly not always the case, the beta does very much play second fiddle to the alpha when it comes to felines. The cat ownership uh, having a beta is actually pretty cool. You're more likely to get more peace with a beta, as beta felines are generally less assertive, less combative, and more agreeable, a bit timid, but also very sweet and playful. I mentioned how I own an alpha. Well, I also have a lovable beta. He'd rather hide behind the couch when trouble comes than face the music. He wants no part of the action if he can't avoid it. Of course, when all the smoke clears, he'll show up and talk a big game, but when it comes time to mix it up, he's hiding away. This was very true during his younger days when he'd go outside. He was the first one to hide. In the big picture of the feline hierarchy, when it comes to what you can expect from a beta, with regards to how they relate to other felines, betas are prone to mix it up with other betas. Especially if one cat is looking to gain some traction in the neighborhood, for example, and become the new king, become the alpha. The fight for unclaimed territory, many times it will involve a couple of betas looking to flex some muscle. Generally speaking, as betas relate to people, I'd say that if you're looking for that cuddle buddy on the sofa, on your sofa, the most agreeable, the most chill and relaxed, beta cat. That's the way to go. Betas are mellow, and this makes them more suitable in the company of elderly and small children. So in summary, before I close things out, alpha cats love to exert their authority, showcase their dominance. Alphas are the leaders. They can engage in bully tactics if needed, and while aggressive at times, Alphas can also be very loyal protectors. Being the alpha is all about respect. It's important to note that not all alphas are, let's say, mean. Showing that dominance can be showcased in many ways. I spoke about Burl. He was certainly the alpha, but for the 10 plus years that I knew him and looked after him, he never had a fight, not a single fight. However, no cat ever approached him either because they knew better. <laughs> Sometimes being the alpha, it's all about that aura. Beta felines are the second in line, the second fiddle. Some betas are content with their position. Some, especially when young, are in the mix to take the crown, to become an alpha. Some betas will engage in dominance when the alpha is away. This is common in a household environment. Generally speaking, betas are gentle and agreeable. Lap cats, couch cats, cuddle buddies, older beta cats are perfect for this role. And while this content was all about the labeling game, as an owner, I wouldn't spend too much time on it, to be honest. In the end, it really doesn't matter your task will still be very much the same. Plenty of those essentials, those essential needs, plenty of love, and that's the goal. That's the primary goal. Every cat comes with their very own unique personality, and that will most always be your challenge, regardless of where your cat falls within that neighborhood pecking order. To the audience of Senior Cat Wellness, your thoughts, additional commentary, personal stories to share, the comments section, as always, it's all yours. And if you enjoyed this content, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as a member of the Senior Cat Wellness family. And until next time, thank you so very much for watching. And as always, I will talk to you later.